So big news from Ukraine. The resistance against the Russian in their occupied areas is growing. Let's talk about it in today's video. Hi, I'm Mike Greiner. I'm a lifelong Democratic activist who's concerned about the direction our country is taking. I'm also a lawyer and an academic, and I'm here to help you stand up to the BS of the MAGA crowd. So I was really excited to see reports that there's an increasing partisan movement in the Russian-occupied areas of Ukraine. It appears that the areas where this is particularly growing are in the south, in the Kherson and Zaporizhka regions of southern Ukraine. Now, this is a significant development for a couple of reasons. First of all, these areas are the kind of areas that the Russians expected would be quite open to their occupation. I mean, after all, many residents there are ethnic Russians, and they actually speak Russian. They follow the Russian Orthodox Church, which has been very supportive of the invasion. And so this is exactly the kind of area that the Russians expected would greet them with open arms. What's more is this was one of the first areas to really being brought under control of the Russians. And in certain areas, they've actually imposed the ruble as the local currency replacing the Ukrainian hryvnia. And again, I have to apologize to my Ukrainian viewers for my pronunciation. Despite these factors that you would think would make it unlikely, though, for an increase in partisan activity, it appears that it is growing. And just a few days ago, partisans claimed responsibility for an explosion in the city of Enerhodar, where the Russian-appointed mayor was seriously wounded. And although it can be hard to quantify these things, there's mounting evidence that Ukrainian people on the ground are increasingly taking the war into their own hands and violently resisting the Russian invasion. Now, this is bad news for the Russians because I think it makes it clear that even if they are able to occupy parts of Ukraine, they're not going to be able to hold them. Over the long term, Ukraine is going to turn into another Afghanistan for them, which among Russians is remembered much the way we Americans remember Vietnam. It appears that part of the reason that this resistance has grown, despite the fact that there are these ethnic connections between these parts of Ukraine and Russia, has been the brutality that the Russians have shown in their occupation tactics. I mean, Russia has behaved like a criminal enterprise in how it has dealt with Ukraine, engaging in the wholesale slaughter of civilians, reneging on deals to allow civilians to evacuate areas that are in the midst of fighting, and now we find out basically plundering the country of its natural resources, including grain, that now Russia is trying to sell on the global market, taking for itself profits that really should be going to the Ukrainians, and using those profits, essentially blood money, as it were, to be able to continue their war. The sale of this grain has really put a lot of well-meaning governments in a tough spot, where there are a lot of countries, especially in Africa and other lesser developed areas, that are facing the potential of starvation. And even though they might not want to support the Russians in their invasion, they're put in a desperate position where they might be forced to buy this grain or starve. It's not much of a choice. Nevertheless, it just points to what a criminal enterprise Russia has become with respect to its invasion of Ukraine. Finally, I think this just points to the fact that the Ukrainians are winning this war. I mean, anybody who's studied the history of World War II is aware of the fact that the real resistance to the Nazis in France and Holland and other areas of Western Europe really started to speed up after the Allies had landed on D-Day. And the more success the Allies had, the more the partisans, both in the Eastern Front and in Western Europe, were willing to create disruptions for the Nazis. Well, it appears that that's what we're seeing in Ukraine as well. These southern areas where we're seeing the most partisan activity arise are also areas where the Ukrainians have been engaging in a pretty successful counterattack. And their recent success pushing back the Russian attack in Severodonetsk really shows that the Russian invasion seems to be running out of steam and might be running into serious trouble, something that adds even more fuel to the fire to the Ukrainians under Russian occupation who see resistance as an opportunity for them to help their country win this war. Well, if you want to hear more about the Ukraine war, why don't you check out this other video over here where I talk about how this war has completely backfired against Vladimir Putin. I'll see you then. In the meantime, let's hope for continued progress. Thank you.